Hello everybody, it's Helen from Journaling Planet and today I'm going to be making some very cute ephemera from stamped tea bags. We're going to look at a couple of different things that you can do including using a bit of watercolour if you have it and um, I've made this one into a tag. The last thing I want to do is sew around the edge here. I'm going to do that all in one go but you get the gist that it is um, quite petite. You can see it in the palm of my hand there. Um, it is backed with tea bag dyed paper, but you could use brown paper. You could use a bit of envelope. You could use anything that you've got lying around. This one is actually an unused tea bag. Um, I do like the way the stamps look on the slightly whiter background, but I am going to dem uh, demonstrate with some used tea bag as well. I've got a bag of used and unused tea bags um, that I've torn and I've opened. Uh, any of you worried about waste, uh, please don't be worried about waste. I keep all the grounds and I use them in tea dyeing solution, but I also use them in, um, Natasha from Treasure Books has a fantastic tutorial on how to make kind of faux handmade paper. And this is one of the things, Tea Grounds is one of the things she recommends putting into it so that it looks kind of very well textured. I just keep it in an old herb jar and um, I just use that periodically. So nothing um, gets wasted, I promise. Um, I use everything. So I'll just show you the process with this one. The reason that it looks a bit brown when it's unused is that I obviously inked around the edges. Okay, um, so first I'll show you how I made this one uh, or something similar. Maybe I'll make a journaling card rather than a tag and um, then I'll show an, a used um, tea bag and what that looks like. When I redo this one, we'll use a bit of watercolour. So I'm going to use archival ink for the next one. This is just normal black ink. This is just a vintage label stamp that I have. Okay, nothing complicated about it. Um, so let's go, th go through the steps and then I'll add the watercolour. So I'll show you first the steps I used and then do the painting afterwards. So first thing that I did was I got a single piece of unused um, tea bag. This one's a little bit more raggedy. But that's okay, we're going to work with that and we'll glue it down. Next thing I did was I have quite a few scraps of music paper in my scrap box. So I just looked for one where most of the back of the tea bag was covered. Um, so, and then I cut around it. So what I did was, um, the thing is about these is you have to glue the surface, not the tea bag, when you get to that. Okay, before I even got to that bit, I stamped the tea bag. So I did that separately first. So first step is to find a piece of tea bag, find where on earth you put your archival ink. Uh, under a pile of papers is usually the answer. Ta-da! And then you're going to look for a stamp that is going to be the main event. It's going to be the main focal point. So I've been um, meaning to use these cute uh, vintage bottle stamps so I'm going to go with that I'm going to get my acrylic block I'm going to get that on there the reason I'm using archival ink on this one where I use just normal black ink on the other one is that archival ink is waterproof so I should be able to paint on this with no problem whatsoever so let's give it a go so this is cute we go. Lovely impression. Okay, it just looks really cute I think. Now of course I could have chosen something if I was smart. I could have chosen something that actually, um, I'm just going to clean off my stamp, did warrant painting. I'm not sure a bottle really warrants painting but we'll figure out a colour that we can paint it. We'll maybe just do two colours, one for the lid and one for the um, main event here. Um, so before we get into painting anything, I'm um, just going to make sure that I've got my other materials to hand, which is my music paper and a piece of tea dyed paper. Okay, so that's all to hand. 
I'm also going to use this old um, dough, dough balls dish as a palette. I've got my Arteza um, pens, watercolour pens. I think actually I'm just going to go for some blue on this. Um, I think that would look quite cool. So I'm probably going to make it look like um, it's blue liquid inside. Oh, <laughs> that's still got a bit of gold paint on there. That's no good. I could just do with some clear water if you don't mind. Thank you very much. And then I use this pen to just make up some blue. Just add a bit more water, I think. And make up some more blue. You don't need much. With these um, pens, the good thing about them, although I've said in other videos I'm not totally in love with them, is that you can um, be quite precise. So you can colour in quite precisely. Oh, I'm not sure if the colour's showing up on that. No, it's a bit too watered down. Let me try getting some more from this other faded blue. See if I can do that. Oh, that's a bit better. Oh, a bit too much water in there. Um, anyway, it's just a suggestion. It has worked before very well when I've painted on the teabag. And of course, now that I'm showing you, it is having a bit of a moment and deciding it doesn't really want to uh, go blue, but it is going blue now. So if in doubt, uh, mix, there's a lesson, mix more blue or colour than water because, um, oh, I do like how that looks though. Very nice. And the good thing about watercolors is you can just reactivate old paint as I've just done there. So um, you can just do this. I'm just painting this on my hand. This is probably not the best place to do it. But, you know, I'm just sort of demonstrating here. So you can do it properly. You can do it on the proper surface and you can, you know, you can do it like a professional. I'm just doing it like a lay person, which is what I am. Um, so oh, I'm really loving how this blue looks though. Gorgeous. I wasn't expecting it to look this nice, which I know is a bit of an odd thing to say, but it's true. I wasn't actually expecting that to come out so well. Really pretty. I do want a bit of contrast around the edge. So maybe I will look at this gold paint that I've got. It's not watercolour, but I can water it down a little bit. Um, and just maybe do a bit of gold around the edges. I think that could look really cute. And it's almost orange, which is a good contrast with the um, blue. So let's see how we get on with this. This should be an interesting experiment, shouldn't it? Let's see how it goes. Mm, just water it down a bit. Just start with a big block. Yeah, you see, that's already quite a lot of paint in one spot. But that's okay. It's working. It's working. It's got a wonderful... Um, iridescent kind of quality to it this paint so I'm just gently because I that's why I started with the biggest patch because I sort of figured that I probably did have too much paint on my my paintbrush there so then I'm going around the smaller bits once I've got a bit of that paint off so I recommend starting with bigger surfaces when you first put your paint onto the um, material whatever it might be because the odds are you probably do have a bit too much on your um, paintbrush and all anyway it is easier to clean up a um a small a big area than it is a small area now you see that has run outside the lines a little bit just ever so slightly on that lid but i'm not worried about that it was you know an experiment at the end of the day it's probably going to dry and you know not be that obvious so i'm not going to worry about that i'm just going to Put that down as a good job. Do you know what I didn't do is there's a little M in the middle and I didn't paint the little M. So let me just get some of the water off this brush. Get some paint on there. And just, just do the little M. <laughs> Probably just paint over it entirely and just make a little gold blob, but that's okay. I don't mind. That's fine. That wasn't very precise. It was just a suggestion of, of gold in the middle. Um, but I do think that looks really cute. So there's that. Um, I'm just going to let that dry for a moment because in a mo in a few minutes I'm going to um, put some glue on that and I'd like it to be as dry as possible. So we'll just give that a minute over there. In the meantime, I can start um, looking at papers. Uh, my 
music paper and just get a sense of how much I'm going to need. I think this spot here is going to be pretty perfect. It could be a little bit, it could be a little bit better to be honest. I need a little bit more width than that for this project. Let's try over here. That's looking a little bit better, has to be said. Okay, so it will go over the crease line on the paper. I don't mind that. I'm just going to use the paper I have. Right, before I get this paint absolutely everywhere, let's put that away. And we'll get some glue sticks. So this is what I was trying to say earlier um, when I got distracted with paint is that you need to paint you need to glue on the surface not on the tea bag and it's just because the tea bag is so delicate it will rip really easily so as you can see it's already quite raggedy from when i tore it i'm still figuring out how to tear them without getting them completely raggedy and as you can see i haven't perfected that yet but that is okay because i think it all adds a bit of texture and then i'm just going to dab dab this down if there are any places that are unglued, I'll come back to them later and glue them down. And the the edges that I went over on the lid of the bottle are almost invisible. You can barely see that I did that. So thankfully, it looks largely like I've stayed in the lines. And anyway, it's supposed to be a piece of ephemera for a junk journal, so it's not supposed to be perfect. And that's the whole reason that I do this craft, is that I don't have to be perfect. It's so liberating. I wonder what it says that most in the community are women and it's one of those crafts where you don't have to be perfect. <laughs> I wonder what it says about expectations on women in our society. Um, I know there's a lot of people who've done commentary, um, a lot of comedians who've done social commentary on the expectation for women to be perfect no matter what they're doing and this is in a way that's I love this craft because in a way it feels very feminist to do it to just say I'm not going to be perfect I'm going to have these weird scrappy bits at the edge of this torn tea bag and there's nothing the patriarchy can do about it <laughs> I don't know why I'm going to this place today I, sometimes I'm just in this place or I'm thinking about these things so obviously the way I've cut that, I've cut around the tea bag so it's not very straight, you know, it's not very straight. So what you can do is you can trim down, that's one option, get it a little bit straighter. But I don't want to cut too much off the edge because then I'll use this, lose this fabulous texture that you get on the edge of tea bags. But I'll just give it a little, little trim, just try and get it as straight as I can. It's not going to be perfect, as I've just said. That's not the aim. Just to get it a little bit closer, because it's about to go get backed onto a piece of tea dyed paper anyway. And if that tea dyed paper shows over the edge, that doesn't matter either. Okay. So what have I got? I've just I when I'm doing tea dyeing, I will throw any piece of scrap paper in there and just make it more interesting. This to me looks like a piece of junk envelope that's been thrown in there, but it'll serve our purposes wonderfully because it's quite sturdy. And I'm just going to back this. Now this time I can, if I want, glue on the back here because I've got the music paper to protect the tea bag. It's just the first layer that you need to glue down on the surface that you're sticking to. Or certainly that's the way, the best way I've found of doing it. Okay, so let's see if that's stuck to the paper now. It's because the paint's still drying. Yep, okay. You know, if there's a right and a wrong way to do something, I will find the wrong way first. That's always my go-to. <laughs> I'm sure this gives you great faith as you're watching this YouTube video and thinking, this is the woman who's supposed to be showing me how to do this. Um, I'm just being honest about it because I think it's very easy to come onto a, a channel like this and pretend like you get everything everything right first time with the wonder of video editing. It's really just not the way of it for me, I'm afraid. 
And I'm going to leave that little bit of overhang at the side there because the tea bag is um, it, it's not straight, so you can probably see that it just overhangs. And I don't mind about that because by the time I've inked around it, no one's going to know. If I wanted to, um, once it's glued down, I can still stamp extra things on it, or well, certainly that's been my experience. So if I got to this point and went, I do like this, but there's a bit too much space here. I could um, come to a um, come to a, a stamp and just you know add a little bit on of text on the bottom. Um, I'm just going to probably do it in archival again because of the glue. Um, best, to, best. To, it's not quite dry yet, so best to keep a waterproof ink. Just going to um, get my block. And this is just a little stamp. I don't know what it means, but I've used it before. It, it says Hanf account? Hanf account? Don't know. Han E account? I don't know. <laughs> maybe you can tell me. I've asked before. Um, and maybe I'll get the answer. So we'll just down in the archival ink. And then just, I just fancy a little bit of text along the bottom here. Yeah. I just fancy that. I think that looks cute. So I'm going to keep this as a journaling card. But just so you're aware of what I did to make the tag, I um, did the usual thing of trimming here and here. And then I used... To top it, there's a little bit across the top of the music paper that has the title on it. Um, so, for example, on this one, it's latest cinema successes. So I trimmed along here and I used a snippet of this to fold over and be the top of the tag. But also at the bottom of the paper, music paper, you often find cool things like this, like text like this. And you could just trim a bit of this off. So I just basically trimmed a bit from either the top or the bottom and put it at the top. I inked around it and put it at the top to make it into a tag rather than a journaling card. So uh, let me just ink around the edges. Now I don't have to do brown and indeed I've done a blue um, piece of paint. So I, if I want to I can go mad, yes mad, and get some peacock feathers on the outside here. And it won't look crazy because we've already got some blue on there so it's kind of just in sympathy with, you know, so why would you bother with this? Why wouldn't you just stamp straight onto the music paper? I mean, what's wrong with that? Why bother with a tea bag? Um, well, there's a couple of things. Firstly, I really like the um, texture you get around the outside, but what's probably not coming across on the video that well is that the tea bag just makes, just mutes the paper behind it. So it does also give you a slightly different aesthetic to just going straight onto book page. It's the kind of aesthetic you'd get by using vellum or tracing paper or something else transparent over the top of, you know, normal paper. It's really just an extra added touch and I just thought it was cute. And on the back you've just got your space for writing on. So that's that. All right, so that's two unused ones. Let's just do one where, well, let's do one where we do the whole tea bag, one that has two sides to it. So we've got more stamping space. Let me find one. I know I've got one in here somewhere, but we're also gonna um, take a used tea bag as well, because these have been used for tea dyeing, as you can probably tell. Okay, so I'm going for double the space. It's all scrunched up because it's been used for tea dyeing, but I'm not gonna let that deter me. I am just going to use my black regular ink for this one. I am going to use a slightly bigger stamp. Um, but first I'd really like to clean off this. Look at the state of this. I mean, I shouldn't really be allowed around wet materials, should I? Because it's obvious I'm just going to make a mess. My mother was right all those years. I'll only make a mess with it, she used to say, when I used to ask about could I do... Could I do art stuff? Like you only make a mess with it on my dining room table. All right, mother, you were right. I concede the point. 
you know, this is my dining room table there, so I can clean it myself. Okay, acrylic block cleaner than it was, but by no means clean. I hear that non-bio washing powder is the way to go if you've got acrylic stamps, acrylic blocks, sorry, that are um, full of ink, but I have yet to be bothered to do that. I just give them a bubble bath now and again with washing up liquid in the sink and um, that gets them sort of almost clean. Right, okay, I'm just going straight in here. I have no idea if this is gonna work, especially given how crinkled it is. Yeah, quite nice. The stakes are low really, aren't they? So I'm just stamping a bit of ink onto some tea, tea bags. So if it hadn't worked, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. Okay, so this time I'm gonna make use a slightly uh, longer, thinner piece of music paper, or indeed I could use some book page if I really fancied it to mix things up. But I have music paper to hand, so that is what I'm going to use. I think you could use anything neutral, uh, to be honest. Anything sort of black and white or, yeah, anything brown. I think you could use anything like that. Okay, that's where I'm thinking. Let's use up this um, this side. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm gonna get glue all over here. Just really go for it. There will be some white space behind this one. I don't mind that. I just, um, with the smaller ones, I think it's better if there's some interest behind all the way, but with bigger ones, you might choose to add other things, other embellishments. These are all these designs are based on one central focal point, so you can mix this up however you want it, and you can go mad and you can add loads more focal points. I'm, all I'm doing is I'm just flattening out the tea bag as best I can without tearing it and dab it down, dab, dab, dab all the way, dab, 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 dab. Because it is torn in places and I don't want to tear it any further. So what I would like is for that to just sit a little bit flatter. I do like the texture of this actually because it's a bit all over the shop but I, I quite like that. I quite like the sort of raggedy texture because it's been scrumpled up to do tea dyeing and left to dry after doing tea dyeing. And there's a big seam in the middle but again that doesn't bother me. Um, that's just where the tea bag seam is. I just think it's more texture. I don't think it's something to worry about or get uptight about. But if it bothers you, then maybe you can think about how to very carefully undo that seam as far as you can without splitting the tea bag in two. That's that would be my suggestion. But I happen to like this as it is. I'm just adding a bit more glue to the corners. I think this one is actually going to look really um, so wonderfully vintage and special. Let me just trim the ends off so I can give you a close-up. So you cannot see the music as much through this one because it's darker. Which is why, another reason why, <laughs> I prefer the um, unused tea bags to a certain extent. However, if you look closely, you can see some writing coming through here, some text. If you look really closely, and I start sort of tapping that down a bit further, you can see that, that lettering. So there are wonderful little details that, come in, that are coming through, even though it's much darker than the unused tea bag. I'm just showing you both so that you can choose what you'd like to do. I am going to back this, although it is quite sturdy already. I'm going to back this with another piece of scrap tea dye paper. I just think you can't, it can't hurt to make it as sturdy as possible. Let's get this in.
It would always, of course, be far too much grand look to be able to just put my hand on my bone folder. So I've just used a card to smooth that out. I do love how this looks. It's very cute. And of course, once I ink around it, which I think I will stick with brown this time and I will just do it darker. So it's even darker around the edges with the brown. I think it's looking really cute. So where's my brown ink? Likes to hide from me the brown. I think it's because I use it so regularly as so I move it around into all different places and can never quite find where it is. One of the issues of using so much ink is that you have quite a few of them on the table and then you can only just you can't ever find the one that you're desperately looking for which is for me usually the brown um but it's you know small price to pay for working with such a great media as this i think anyway so i'm just not really seeing much difference between this color and the color of the tea bag to be totally honest but um, I do think that inking the edges, particularly where the music paper is showing through, is just giving it a little something, you know, a little something extra around the edge. If you wanted to, you could go in with another maybe darker colour. You know, I, I know the Distress Ink comes in like black soot. That might be an option. It would mirror the black ink you'd used on the um, central embellishment. Or something like worn lipstick, which I did contemplate for just a second. And I'm now slightly regretting not using it because um, I think that would have really um, popped, but never mind. This is very simple. Very simple. And for that reason, you could contemplate adding a bit of lace. I mean, I think particularly with something that's kind of sewing themed like this embellishment is, I think maybe at the top and the bottom that would look particularly cute. Um, so I'm going to just give it a go because I haven't tried that yet. Um, I may even add a bit of lace to the other ones uh, if I like the look of it. So let's let's see how it goes. So I'm thinking across the top and across the bottom. So it's about there. Do I need to trim? For this, I'm just going to use a little tiny bit of um, clear PVA because for some reason my... Um, my fabric glue has got very funny about ribbon. <laughs> it's very strange. I don't understand why. It's just not working as it once did. I don't understand why this isn't working as it once did. Is it glued up? I think it might be time to put a pin in this and just see what we can shake out of it. Yeah, it's, it's completely glued over because I haven't put the cap on it. Um, I'm just showing you this bit because I think it is useful for people who are not used to working with wet adhesives to just know how you solve that problem really quickly and that's just get a sewing pin and um, yeah just go along there now this is probably going to come out far too quickly so I've got to be a bit careful there we go just a little bit along there if I do too much, then um, it'll be everywhere. So I'll just put that along there. And just carefully arrange that along the bottom there and press down as you know hard as you dare on this. I often put it underneath a paperweight so that it you know really sticks. And we'll just try along the top as well. We'll just, why don't we put our paperweight on there whilst we're on. Just give it a hand. And then just going to do exactly the same as I did before. I'm going to measure the lace along. This is going to obscure the very top of my stamp a tiny bit, ever so tiny. I'm not worried about that. It'll be fine. This time the glue should be a little bit more um, obedient, but then again, I think that about glue all the time and then it's just not. So I think I have a very, I don't know, clearly an unrealistic idea of how helpful my glue should be. So let's just pop this on the end. And just press. 
press it down hard as you dare I say hard as you dare because these things are quite fragile you know these embellishments are quite fragile All right let's just give this a minute under the paperweight as well see if that helps but it certainly has helped the bottom idea nicely and I do think that looks a little bit more interesting and I am going to go around this with the sewing machine so that I'll hold that in place and it'll hold all the layers together as well. So I'll just have a think about whether or not I want to add some lace to the bottom of this or is it going a bit far? I don't know. It does look kind of cute and it's just a little bit something extra. So maybe I will do that. I am not not minded to do it with this one so I think this one yes and other than that we'll just leave it as is obviously I could but just you know quote quoting Jurassic Park just because or paraphrasing Jurassic Park just because I could doesn't mean that I should um I have watched Jurassic Park a lot <laughs> I've watched all the Jurassic Park movies a lot I don't know what it is with me in that I just have a slight, um, I don't know, obsession with those movies. They're just, they're very easy to watch. I've obviously watched the first one way more than the others, but I I, I, it would be wrong to pretend like I haven't seen the others, with the exception of number three, multiple times, because I have, I have. Jeff Goldblum's always fun, right? He's always fun. That's just gone on really nicely. And I'm just going to let it set for a moment before I sew around. Okay, let's see how this one's doing. Yep. Apart from the fact that it's lightly stuck to the back of this uh, tea dyed paper, which it was a little bit. That's looking so cute. As is this. This one now possibly looks a little bit plain in comparison. But I just don't think lace is the right way to go with it. So maybe I'll do um, just, just a bit of sewing around the edge. We'll just set that off, I think. I'm going to go and sew on the edge and then I will show you the finished product. Okay, that was a bit of an adventure, but I'll explain to you why in a moment. This one worked perfectly fine, straight through, nice little zigzag stitch and it is, as always, the finishing touches that really make these little pieces work. And with that in mind, I am going to do some gold spattering across them in a moment. So I'm just going to bring this, uh, I'm just checking it's dry, but yes, this is dry. The um, little box that I use um, to spatter gold paint across things, or any colour paint, but it, it is usually gold because it's a good neutral. I'm just going to do that quickly and then show you a, a close-up. As usual, it is the finishing touches that really make these projects, I think, what they are. So... I think that just adds a something, little something extra to get a bit of paint spatter across there. Even on this brown one, it won't show up brilliantly on the brown one, but when you look up close, it will be there. And I'll show you a close-up and we'll get some on the lace. And I'll explain to you why I've added a couple of buttons at the bottom there, because that was not in the plan. <laughs> so we'll just get it all spattered with some nice gold paint particularly over here. Yeah, that's it. Get a bit more on that because it's brown. It won't show up otherwise. Get some on there. Okay. Lovely. So when you do this effect, I'll just give you a little close up on this. I do think it's worthwhile um, doing this kind of effect. It just gives you a little something extra, a little bit more texture. You can do like uh, texture stamping if you've got some texture stamps or stencils. This one uh, worked beautifully, also went straight round, no problem really. Um, straight through the lace. I trimmed the lace at the edges a bit because I thought it was a bit much. But other than that, just as you saw it last, this one was where the problem arose, but it was only because, I think, my um, thread, my needle unthreaded in my thread sewing machine, like here. And then bunched up all the lace along the bottom, which is, of course, exactly what you want in these projects. And um, essentially ruined the lace at the bottom. So I had to pull that up, get a new piece of lace, 
and essentially go over it to try and hide it. And there was still like a lot of raggedy bits in this corner. So I just, given the design of the kind of sewing mannequin, I just added two buttons with um, tacky glue and sewed the rest of it around. So I do think that's worked out okay in the end, but it was not the easiest one by far. Um, so that's some ephemera using tea bags. One of them painted with um, paper, one of them painted with watercolour and the rest just splashed with a little bit of paint and lace to finish off. I do think that they're very cute. They'll, they're also functional, so we can use the back of them for journaling. And when they're dry, they'll be nice and rigid and will flip easily in and out of pockets. Hope you've really enjoyed watching this video. I really enjoy working with this kind of media. Uh, I'll look forward to speaking with you again soon.